Hey there, welcome back to the Qigong Iron Body Meditation session. We ended the previous one a little early. We're going to continue with that. So if you missed it, just go watch the recording that's on um, our website, uh, usethechi.com. It's going to be the community. So go to the community area, sign up for free, and you get the access to the uh, previous recordings. All right, so we ended up uh, in the... Um, underwater position so we have this like this you're underwater holding a tree and your feet are shoulder width apart a little bit wider actually than shoulder width apart your knees are slightly bent and you want to start up with your legs straight then drop a little bit slowly until you feel like you're sitting on something so you drop slowly and then eventually it gets to a point where you feel like okay i feel like i'm sitting on something and i can just sit there for a long time without my legs getting tired you might have to try a couple more times so start out and then relax breathe out and then it comes to a point it's not not that much for me probably just a couple of inch drop and i can feel like okay i can sit there for a long time without getting tired same thing with your arms you can have your arms come down slowly until it comes to a point where you feel like it kind of sits there so for me it's here but you can go drop lower until it feels like it kind of sits there. Like here would be another position. It feels like it just naturally sits there. Uh, if that's not comfortable, then it might be somewhere down here. We feel like it just, you can hold it in that position for a long time. So whichever you want to start, if you're more advanced, you can even have your hands up like this, which would be more tiring on your shoulders. Uh, or if you're, you can have it, have it at eye level like this, or you can have a chest level or belly level, or you can even just keep your hands down completely if you're really tired. But I like to do it around here, chest level. Um, so from this point, what you can do is start to visualize yourself being underwater without any weight. So you take a deep breath. Let's imagine you are in a swimming pool and you're underwater obviously you can breathe naturally even though you're underwater and just feel the water current on your skin so feel the current of water on your face on your arms it's easier to stand uh, i mean start with the hands feel the water current on your hands on your arms and then you move it up your body so you move it up to your shoulders to your neck your chest and to your belly your hips, legs, and so on. So just do that scanning from your hands into the rest of your body. So you take a deep breath and then scan your whole body sequentially. So as you breathe out, you're scanning your body and raising the awareness of your skin. And then you want to relax as much as you can. So in order to know that you're relaxed, you need to be able to move it, move that part of your body and still feel like it's relaxed and not tensed up. So with each breath, scan your body. And when you find a place where you feel like there's some kind of tension, let's say the legs are getting tired, stand up straight again and sit back into that position. Maybe as you go, if you kind of sink lower and lower and lower, eventually it gets a little bit too low. So just go back up, uh, stand back up uh, straight and then sink back down to that uh, sitting sensation position. Okay, so keep sensing and feeling your skin. If you're outside, this is a little bit easier because there may be some airflow or you have a fan on in the house. Or even if you open the windows, there should be some kind of natural airflow that's happening around you. 
So the idea is to be sensitive to that and really feel the air flowing over your skin. Now, once you can feel the air, you can kind of translate that to underwater and imagine that you're underwater and you're actually feeling the water flow over your skin. Now what I want you to do is to start breathing with your back. So as you breathe, your back will kind of sink back a little bit. Look at my lower back here. And then breathe out. It goes back to the middle of the body. It sinks back a bit and it opens up the back and you breathe in and then breathe out. Breathe in. Watch my lower back. So whenever you breathe in, it's as if you you, you you kind of cave in or you fold, you fold in the front. Because if you fold in the front, you see my shoulders folding inwards, my arms folding inwards. Then what happens is it opens up your back. So. You're folding the front and it opens up your back and breathe, breathe out and go back to uh, starting position and then breathe in. So I'm exaggerating, but you don't want to, we're not actually physically pushing it out. So you're using your breath to guide the movement. So use the breath to guide the movement. So as your lungs fill up, because your lungs actually go backwards too, right? They expand like a balloon in all directions. So what you're doing is you're emphasizing the backward expansion of the lungs. Many people don't focus on that. They mostly focus on the outward expansion like of the lungs, right? Or downward expansion with the diaphragm. That's downward expansion of the lungs. But how about the backward expansion of the lungs? And that's what you do here. What we're doing here is that backward. It's the backward expansion of the lungs. Okay, so see so you can practice that for a little bit. So just watch my back. Watch the front of my body too, how it folds. So as you're doing this, you're imagining and you're actually physically expanding the back and expanding that uh, your lungs backwards. Now, remember we practiced earlier um, how to expand the lungs downwards and that's by relaxing your belly as you breathe in. See how my belly comes out? As I breathe in. So what you're doing is actually pulling the lungs downwards, which is really, really good for you. And, you, and the belly breathing helps you to relax. So what I want you to do is to combine the back and downwards. So you're actually pulling it downwards and back. See how my belly comes out? And also my belly, uh, my, my back is opening up in the back. So now you actually add another dimension to your lung capacity. We're pulling downwards and backwards. See, when my, my, my back is, open, uh, is opening up backwards, my belly, my belly got bigger. When I breathe in, it goes back to normal. Okay, so now you can see it without touching. Just do it without touching it with your arms locked like this. Make sure you hit the like. I don't see enough likes here. Tap the screen. We had 
A thousand likes last time, only see 43. So we, should, we can definitely have a lot more likes. Thank you. Thanks for the likes. Tap the screen. Okay, so now you have that going. Now what you want to do is uh, get into your the strongest stance you can feel, like the more the most solid stance you feel you can do. So usually it's my, my legs get wider, right? Maybe my arms are up here. So let's say that you're about to push a car. You need to be in the strongest stance you can possibly do without leaning forward too much. So you're pushing a car. Imagine you got this really heavy thing you're trying to push. Get into that stance, okay? For me, I'm just going to do this because this is for uh, fighting. For you, you can imagine you're pushing a car. And do the same thing. So I'm going to be breathing with my belly first. See my belly getting bigger and smaller. Okay, now with the, now I'm gonna breathe my back. Now you breathe the belly and the back together. So this technique is for training iron body. So it builds resilience, builds the vitality, builds strength. Okay, now if you're doing it with your right foot back, now do it with the other foot back so you can do the same thing. So start with the belly, just belly breathing. Just belly breathing, belly coming in and out. Uh, if you're breathing dizzy, you're probably breathing too much. So just slow it down. Just, you don't have to breathe as hard as I am. Just breathe slower. Now the back breathing. You're getting tired, reset. Now combine the belly and the back breathing. No, I don't, I don't have this on YouTube because it's something new I'm doing. But if you want access to past um, live streams, you can go to this website and join our community. Uh, it's called Chi Life Academy and you can get the uh, free courses there. Okay, from sideways, if you can see, I'm, I'm opening up my belly and opening up my back, so pulling my lungs downwards and backwards. I'm 
Okay. Now I'll get back into this position and we're going to add a little, one more thing. So what I want you to add is um, the underwater sensation. So you're in this position. Now just relax first, deep, deep breathe, take some breath. And just imagine water is washing over your body. Then imagine you're underwater. You can hold your hands, whatever position, but whatever ending position you have, hold your hands there like that. So for me, it's here. And then imagine I'm underwater, floating. I feel weightless. Just, and now imagine everything melting off and washing over your body. Okay, and then now imagine you're underwater. Now, while you're in this position, activate that um, belly and back breathing. So it's very subtle because now you are what you want to keep the relaxation so you're not really using your muscles that much but you're actually using your breath to guide your body so wash over your body everything's melting off everything's sinking into the ground plus you're underwater and then add the belly breathing add the back breathing and then add the combined belly and back breathing. Uh, this is, well, breath work, this is a part of it, but we're not focusing just on breath work because breath work, they do mostly just the breath. We're focusing on um, body structure as well. So this is Qigong. Uh, my version of Qigong, there's many different types, but this is my version of Qigong. We can call it David Wong Qigong. So underwater, weightless, melting, and then back and belly and back breathing. Does this help with any illness? I think it helps with all illnesses, <laughs> to be honest, because you're raising your chi energy. It's not medical advice, but I mean, qigong, life force, chi energy in general, it just raises your vitality and raises your resilience all across the board. So I would say it helps with all illnesses. Now, you see, when you do this, this is actually not recommended in Qigong because it, it closes this up. It closes up. And what you want to do is open up like this, right? You want to open up. So if you're just doing this and you're a beginner, do an open up uh, arm position. So you have a tree, let's say you're hugging a tree or you're pushing a car, or you're pushing, your, your intention is pushing something. Do those positions. I'm doing this because um, I'm, I'm uh, practicing my boxing. So this is my defensive position. So that's why I'm practicing that. But for you, 
for beginners, probably not good for you to do this because you're tensing up your shoulders. But I'm able to do it because I can do this in a relaxed way. But most people, if you do this, you naturally tense up. So what you want to do is you open up like this if you're at home and starting. But if you but if you have done this for a while, you can keep your arms relaxed. See how my hands are, arms are relaxed, my shoulders are relaxed. While doing then then this, then you can do this. So many people think, oh, you're just standing there and breathing. What's the big deal, right? So, um, so if you're in combative arts or if you're just in any kind of sports, right, you want to have more resilience. So, so you get into that stance, right? You're sinking you're in a strong stance. Your spine is aligned. Everything's melting off your bones, your skin, the meat is melting off wash through your body and then you also have the belly, uh, back and belly breathing right and then you also have the underwater sensation so I'm gonna have activate all those in my mind and then really feel it in my body right I'm feeling in my body right now okay now I activate my, uh, it and I can hit my, you can you can use something and hit yourself with it to develop that resilience so this is this is a solid wooden peg, right? One other thing I do is actually squeeze my thighs, squeeze my inner thighs, and then I roll into it, into this position, and then everything is trying to relax as much as possible while squeezing your thighs, while melting. And then, then you practice hitting yourself with it. And also breathe in, in. Okay, reset, reset, relax, squeeze, melt, underwater. Now, people say, well, if you're in a fight, you don't have time to think of all those things. But if you practice this enough, then you need to have a trigger word. Let's say, uh, trigger word is iron, right? So find a trigger word for you. I say that uh, for me it's iron, so I'm thinking the word iron, and then it will automatically turn on because your body will be conditioned to, uh, or subconsciously and consciously get into that position, that sensation within with just one trigger word. But right now we're practicing the whole sequence so we can deepen that um, attribute in yourself. But eventually you want to be have want to be able to recall it on demand with just a trigger word or a trigger thought, right? So that's why you're training. So while you're getting to this position, okay, let me let me uh, kind of uh, review. So you start up standing straight, but then you sink into a position where you feel like you you're sitting on something. Then you relax and melt everything off your bones. Then you uh, wash everything through. <sighs> imagine this washing, washing, water washing through a sponge, and your body is a the sponge. Then you imagine you're underwater. Okay. Then you do the belly and back breathing. Then you, um, then you squeeze your thighs, and then you roll up, and then you sit back into this position. And then you want to keep all that while thinking the trigger word.
Okay, and I don't recommend using like a wooden peg to start this with. I would just use your hands or something lighter. But then, have you done that for some while? You can just think of the trigger word and you're already in that position, right? Think of the trigger word for me, it's iron. So I think of iron, I'm already in the position. Strong, right? So let's say you're just walking and then what happens is you get in a car accident or somebody pushes you in a busy place. When you train this enough, if, uh, it's kind of like installed in your body subconsciously. And what happens is, um, I have this many times, like I bump into somebody uh, accidentally when I'm walking by and then the other guy's, oh, and you think that I like purposely hit him, but he, but I didn't. I just bumped into him and he bumped into me. And for some reason, my body is just, basically it's like a tree. It's like he just walked into, into a tree. So I'm not, so, so that's what you're going to start developing. It's just this natural, um, what do you call it? Resilience or natural iron in your skeletal structure. And in, even in the way you walk in your posture, it's going to look, first of all, a lot more confidence. Uh, and, uh, you know, functionally, it's actually a lot more, um, what do you call it? Stable. You're more, it's, it's a balance, but it's, on, it's beyond just being balanced because you can balance on a, on a, on a tight rope, right? But it's not just balanced. You actually are more connected to the ground. Um, but not like, you don't have to be like this to connect to the ground. It's like you connect to the ground just as you are. So, which is very helpful, obviously, when you're fighting uh, in, a, in, in competitive, competitive martial arts. And, and in general, it's very, very good for staying uh, stronger um, and being able to prevent any injuries if you do sports, right? Many people, they like get shoulder injuries, wrist injuries, whatever injuries. Now, because you've installed this, I don't know what I call it, this alignment or this connectiveness throughout your whole body, then it's much harder for you to get injured, okay? So, and you can practice, right? You wanna be, you can practice long enough, you wanna be thinking of, think of the word and you get into that, get into that state right away. So, walking along, walking on, think the word, and then get into that state, okay? Get into that state. And then you make your body remember that sensation and remember that it's not just the, so you see me, you see me in the stance, but it's not just what you see. It's not just the structure. There's actually something else going on internally that you can't see. It's more has to do with your sensations and how your mind is connected with your body, which gives you that extra thing that people cannot explain, right? So people, even in my gym, I go like this, right? It looks very small. That's my punch. And then they're like, oh, they don't understand how I get so much power from just a short punch. So that has something to do with it, okay? So what I want to do is like get in that position and then keep, you know, you can even chant to yourself that, that word. So when you say that word later, it triggers you to get back into this state, right? So I'm, let's say I'm just walking, 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 and I think a trigger word. I'm also immediately going to that, well, physically, uh, and, outwardly and also internally get into that state okay so trigger word iron and physically and in that state uh, you can, it's more than cell memory cell is yeah you can call it cell memory but but it's actually more than how just individual cells it's more about how your whole body is working together and how your what your mind is work how your mind is connected to your body. Yeah, more connected and grounded to the ground exactly. So, um, so think of that trigger word, get into that state, and then you can test yourself or you have somebody test by just tapping you in the shoulder, slapping you in the shoulder, and seeing um, whether you have that resilience, right? So you should be walking around and then think trigger word, and then all of a sudden you're on in that. You're ready to go, right? You have that resilience in, on, on demand. So you see, uh, in practice, both sides too. Sometimes you have your right leg in front. So you're just walking around and then you think finger work, right? You should be, 
should be pretty re resilient right there, right? Okay, so you should be able to get into that immediately. Okay, you can test yourself. Now eventually, you don't even have to outwardly, at the really high levels, you don't even have to outwardly or physically get into that position. You just have to do it internally and you get the same effect. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Because there's two things happening. There's out, out, outward physical, you can see, yeah, I'm very strong, looks very strong, right? But there's also the in, internal uh, thing that's happening that's making me strong, which is the relaxation, the sinking, the floating, the looseness, and the breathing, okay? So that's the internal stuff you don't see. So if you get to a higher level, you can just be standing up like this. It doesn't look strong at all, but then you have the internal stuff happening and you get the same effect. Still very resilient. Okay, I'm not even in a strong position. I'm just standing normal. And I still have that resilience because it's internal. Does that make sense? And so where many people, they see people breaking things without but just their finger. It looks very easy and you think it's fake. And many people don't get it and they kind of blows by their head because they're expecting this. Ah, they're expecting to see that much force in order to break something. But what's going on is that they trained so much internal power that they do not need the outward expression of the force. They just express it internally and they can just use their fingers to break something. Okay, so when so so for people who have trained this, they recognize what's going on because they say, well. That guy can break the brake with just internal power and they're not using external power. That's, you know, a high level of um, skill in order to do that. So I uh, hope that kind of gives you an idea what's going on here and what we're training. Okay, I've studied this before. Chi is stored in the bones, correct? Well, uh, yes, Chi is stored throughout the whole body, but we have different energy centers like the Dantian. Theoretically, it's stored, you know, a lot of it's stored here um, in your Dantian. There's other energy centers. Uh, chi is, they say Chi is created from the bone marrow, which is in, in your bones. So, yes, uh, bones also store Chi. Have you ever seen anyone use Chi in a mystical manner? Yes. What foods are better absorb this? Um, herbs are good, like traditionally, um, ginseng is very good. Uh, like any, uh, I, I recommend uh, either Korean ginseng. All right, uh, it depends on your body type. There's different kinds of ginseng. Uh, there's um, so according to theory, there's there's cold body types and hot body types. So if you're a cold body type, there's a certain type of ginseng you should be taking, and you shouldn't be taking the other kind. If you're hot body type, then there's another kind of ginseng. So you need to kind of figure out what which body type you have. Uh, to, to so one thing is not uh, best for all people. It really depends on your body type. What? Where's the loya dan tian? Yeah, dan tian. You spelled it correctly. Uh, your belly button and just an inch and a half inside. So it's inside. So you you point belly button and about an inch and a half inside. So it's inside of your guts. What? increase your level of chi well, what we just did today that's going to help you increase your chi okay so the next step is uh so we did the defensive one right defensive so when hits coming in you just have to you just have to think about that and then all of a sudden all of a sudden people are breaking their hands on your on your blocks and they do that i go like this boom and then they break their they bruise their hand and they can't punch anymore because uh because my bones are so strong um they don't want to hit me anymore because they hit, because they break their hands. Literally, they break, they're breaking their hands as they're hitting me. So, um, so that's defensively is very useful. If you just tired and you don't want to be throwing punches, right? You're just blocking, boom, boom. You just use your parries, right? Your parries, you use your here, um, right? Parry, parry. You even punch their punches, like the punch is coming. You punch their punch, right? Right? Or they try to hit your body, you just go. Right, just block, block, just drop the elbow just an inch or two. And they really feel it. They actually, um, they don't want to hit you anymore because their hand hurts, even with boxing gloves. So, uh, so that's one useful thing about having a very strong iron body. Okay, obviously when you get hit in the head, it's not ideal, 
right? So you want to be blocking with your hands or at least moving it a little bit, right? Or using elbows, right? To block and so on, right? Um, so that's the defensive way of using it. So there's an offensive way of using it, okay? Which uses the same principles. And how you do it is, is you're using the same principles, but you're using it uh, with one of your movements. So remember we were doing the car pushing thing. So just imagine that you're pushing, you can do this against the wall. So you're pushing against the wall like this. Now you don't actually have to put too much weight into it, but practice just pushing lightly, but then uh, activating all those internal things that we talked about. Okay. Now, you, or you can just push an imaginary wall. You can, you can play mime. Okay. You just imagine there's a wall here and you're pushing it and but you have all those things going on that we discussed, which is the, the uh, sinking, the melting, and the breathing with the back and belly, and underwater, all right? Uh, and then also, what else was there? Yeah, breathing, underwater, and, uh, and now you want to, um, just have a little bit of intention pushing forward, but don't lean forward too much. Okay, so with a punch, it's the same thing. You, ha you have your punch almost fully extended, okay? And you want to find that structure that you feel the strongest without leaning forward. And you want to be able to just get into that state again, iron, iron body state, and you use the same trigger word, iron, and what you want to do is now you want to imagine that there is a line connecting your fist and your back foot. Okay, now you've got that. Imagine there's a line connecting your fist and your back foot. Next, I will do the belly breathing. I mean the belly and back breathing. The same thing we did while in this position. Next, I want you to, um, every time you breathe out, I want you to send two lines of force, one to your foot, one to your fist. So send the line of force to your fist, breathe in, send to your fist, and then same time send to your foot. So you're doing this. I'm pointing at where you're sending the, the energy. Now I want you to do the same time. I know I'm jumping many steps, but you can practice this on your own, okay? So breathe in, now it goes to both directions. Now I'm just pointing to show you what your intention is. So now do it without the pointing, actually feel it in your body. Now you can do practice this arm too, in this position. So you're punching like this. Okay, now it might make more sense because right now uh, you might not be used to that sensation to practice against the wall. Do the same thing. You don't have to push hard, but you just want to have pressure. And the point is to try to connect your hand with your back foot. Yeah, 
want to. Okay, you want to feel the pressure on your back foot and on, on your fist as you push against the wall while you're basically this is the like the pivoting point or your fulcrum um, let's say this is the the ball bearing or whatever it is everything's rotating around this ball bearing this giant little ball you have in the middle of your dantian okay so whenever you are moving you see this ball and this pivot is happening so it, it's connecting your uh the, the line of force, right? and then you want to send the line of force both directions at the same time, okay? So let's just practice that um, for another five minutes, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we're going to uh, have, a, I guess, a question and answer period. So I did that side, I'm going to do this side. You're welcome. hand This is my weakest side, which is my left foot and my left arm backwards. So, yeah, so I fixed something. Uh, I didn't squeeze my thighs in enough. So I, so I reset myself, make sure I got everything. Squeeze, roll, sit. Belly breathing. So you, you, if you're doing this uh, properly, you should feel your legs getting pretty tired because uh, you want to be in this really strong position, right? Just so you can see what kind of stance I have here. See my 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 knees are kind of inwards because I'm squeezing my thighs together. So when I'm sinking, I'm opening up my back and breathing in my belly, so I'm pulling my diaphragm down and backwards. And then when I breathe out, I bring it back to the middle.
okay? All right, so that's a, it's a practice at home, a practice on your own. There's lots covered today. A lot of it is a pretty advanced. Um, so just add things a little, a layer at a time, right? So if you're just practicing the washing, that's the first part, right? Just practicing washing through your sponge. Imagine your body is made of a sponge and just practice washing the water through that sponge. And just do that. And when you're doing it, just, just practice with that one, one sensation. And then once you master that sensation, once you can really feel it, like actually washing through every part of your body, then you can move on to the next sensation, which is uh, feeling, um, what is it? Um, uh, melting all the meat off of your bones. Okay, and then after you feel, you want to add the sensation of being underwater. There's other ones I want to add, I just don't want to add so many that it makes you overwhelmed. And then, then you do the belly breathing, add the belly breathing. Actually, you can just do the belly breathing by itself without the stance. Slowly. You can do this quickly, fast, if you want, or slowly. If you do it quickly, it activates your energy uh, and it gives you a lot of energy actually and focus. And then you do the back breathing. So you can see my back opening up. You see my lower back expanding. So that's the belly and back breathing. Now you can do both. The, can it help with heart disease? As I said, Qigong, uh, and all these exercises will help with, I would, I say any disease, including heart disease, because it just increases your life force, right? Um, you'll find, you know, your breathing will improve, you're, you're, you will be able to reduce stress and be able to reduce inflammation. You can look up, you know, uh, scientific research on Qigong. There's lots of studies done uh, on Qigong and how it helps with, you know, like probably hundreds of different uh, diseases. So I would say Qigong in general helps with everything. So yeah. Where am I located? I'm located in uh, Vancouver, Canada. So uh, so let's just end it off right there. So ending off, I'd like to just do another you know, full body brush. Just brush off any stuck energies. I, I like to shake and bounce a little bit. Then put your hands on your belly with your feet together, up straight. And just focus your all your awareness to your Dantian or your belly button. And do belly breathing. And what you want to do is just gather any kind of energy back into your belly. And then as you're there, you want to imagine a leaf floating, gently falling from a tree, gliding, rocking back and forth. So just watch this leaf rock back and forth as it falls down the tree. And watch it go and rest onto the ground. Now it's on the ground. And then open up your eyes and you're done. All right, so use the G and Prosper. I'll see you later.